Hey everybody, welcome back to Wild Care. It is Thursday and we have a very cool treat for you today. Not only do we have the absolutely beautiful Sequoia the Northern, Northern Spotted Owl who is looking slightly more awake than the last mm -hmm. couple of times we filmed her. Yeah. <laughs> but we also have Melissa getting ready to tell us some amazing facts about skulls. You yes. go ahead, girl. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, Sequoia here, our sleepy Northern Spotted Owl. Mm -hmm. uh, she came to us, uh, she's about 15, 15 this year. Wow. Okay. She came to us when she was a young owlet, uh, found in Larkspur, and what had happened to her was she was hanging out in a tree in her nest, maybe on a branch, fell out of that uh, tree and hit a branch on the way down. Now we did our very best to try to get her back out into the wild, but the tendon in her wing actually shrank. So it prevented her from having silent flight and that is what they have to have um, in order to survive, to sneak up on their prey. Sure. So today we're talking about skulls and I love talking about skulls and especially our owl skull. So this is a, not a real, um, great horned owl skull but a replica yeah, there, we go. Right. there we go that's a little better okay so i want to talk about a couple of structures of the skull here so we're talk about this most notable skull right there which is the sclerotic ring okay it's a bony structure and it's actually um, not fused into the skull it's part of the eyeball oh okay. and it's a bony structure that's it's part a bony of the eyeball that's fascinating bony okay. structure part of the eyeball and the bone keeps the shape of the eye and it also helps to main pr uh, maintain pressure in the eye. Interesting, so my question when I heard about this was what is the, so this is only birds? And fish. Birds and fish mm -hmm. that have that uh, sclerotic. Bony. Bony, yes, yes. Uh, but, but mammals have something else. Yes, it's a sclerotic ring, so okay. muscles. So, muscles. okay, muscles and tendon mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but birds and fish have this uh, bony structure, okay. Mm -hmm. And this can actually tell us a lot about um, if that animal is active at night or active during the day. Now you'll notice here on the great horned owl, this sclerotic ring is tubular. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that helps to control the light, the amount of light that actually goes into the retina. Okay. So for an owl, night vision, allowing that amount of light in and out and being having great control over it tells us that it is active at night. Okay, now Let's look at Sequoia's eyes yeah. here, yep. She is not active during the day. No, yeah. no. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But so somebody like a pelican mm -hmm. or a gull or another type of, of diurnal bird, what would what would he have? It'd actually be a really flat sclerotic ring. It wouldn't be so tubular here. Interesting. Now you'll notice also that takes up a large part of that skull. The eyeball does. Okay. Um, if we had eyeballs like owls, our eyes would be the size of oranges in comparison. Wow. So. Um, very, very small space for the actual brain <laughs> in the skull. Everybody says that owls are wise. Is they that true? do. They do. Um, I think they're wise in that they can do stuff that I cannot. True. So, um, but the actual size of the brain is, is quite small, um, probably comparable to a, a bean. Sequoia, do you hear what she's saying? Yeah. Uh huh. So about the size of like a lima bean or something? Lima bean, yeah, and <laughs> about two pennies, about weight in two pennies. If you want to compare that to a human brain, our brain weighs about three pounds. Oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And again, because that's taken up most of that skull, you have that bony structure, it also means that she cannot move her eyeballs like we can. Okay. Uh, we can, without moving our head, look up, look down, look left and right. She cannot do that because of the way that her eyes are in her skull. So what does she do instead? She rotates that uh, skull with her neck bones. Oh yes, do you want to, can we demonstrate that? Sure. So if you feel your neck, we or us mammals have- <laughs> I almost let go of the camera. <laughs> yeah, did you? Yeah. You're like, everyone feel your neck. Uh, you have seven bones in your neck. Giraffe has seven, mouse has seven, dog has seven. Okay. She has 14, okay? So if we pay attention to the front here of Sequoia and we go, that's the back of her skull. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, she can do that at 270 degrees. Wow. Now, the myth where that myth came in about turning it all the way around is that they can do it so quickly in either direction, it looks like their heads are spinning. Oh, that's so funny. Of course, it would never work to have it, it would spin all the no, way around. No, no. It would fall off. No. Yes, exactly. That was cool. It, let's have you do that again. Okay. So, front. Look at how far she can get that head around. That is just... Amazing. And what I'm doing is uh, making imitating a mouse sound. Sure. To get her to try to focus on that, um, focus on that sound on the back there. Sure. 
Now, if we go to the beak, of course she is a raptor, so all raptors have a hooked beak. Glare here. Oh, Let's get right there. Shade. There okay. we go. Thank you. They have that hooked beak. Okay, yes. that hooked beak. You know, they can tear in to maybe larger prey or tear up some prey, bring it back and feed it to their babies. So the hooked beak, very powerful. So a quick question about that. So if we look at Sequoia here, it looks like she just has a little tiny beak. Now mm -hmm. that's just what would be the black part of that right. poking out from her feathers, right? Right, and if um, we were to remove all the feathers, you would see uh, owls look very, very different. I mean, they're mostly just feathers. Structure is very um, different looking right. than with so the they feathers look, there. they look like this, yeah. Yeah, they look like that. And uh, so they hook into a piece of meat, um, tear it up, or they can swallow their prey whole. And of course you have the nostrils or the nares thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I thought this was really interesting. This is called the zygomatic arch. Okay. And in comparison to humans, that would be their cheekbone. Okay, so let's do this again. So that little bone there that you're touching with mm -hmm. your thumb, that would be that is the bird's equivalent of the cheekbone. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. That is fascinating and, and it just kind of provides some structure for the for the beak and mouth, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For the yeah, mandible. That makes sense. Kind of, I mean, that's essentially what ours does too. Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Tell me about the bird's nostrils. So the nostrils. Let's look at Sequoia's nostrils very yeah. briefly. There that's we right go. There. Of course, she has a lot of little uh, feathers around there. Feathers around there, so it's kind of hard to see. Kind of get a little glimpse right there. Huh? Cool, all right, let's go back to our skull. Has no sense of smell. No, not at all. None at all, not at all. Um, if we were to try to determine if an animal that we found in the skull did have a sense of smell, like a mammal, like maybe a, uh, we would find a coyote or bear or raccoon skull, that actually have this really um, intricate um, lace-like structure of bones and they're called the turbinates. Oh, right, right? And course. that's for smelling, of course. So sure. they um, don't have a sense of smell, uh, which is would be good if, you know, they're gonna eat a skunk or anything right. like that. You know, right. I wanna have yeah. a good sense of smell on that one. Likes to eat the skunks. They so. like to eat the skunks. Um, they do have taste buds though. And the oh. taste buds are actually located on the roof of the beak here in the back and in the front. Taste buds are not as developed as ours. Well, that makes sense because they mostly eat rodents. Yeah, 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 they eat some disgusting stuff, <laughs> but they uh, definitely um, have to know by taste too. Um, if it's you know it's it's Look. rancid or if it's something that they definitely want to eat. Sure, that makes sense. I mean, that would be a survival a survival sure. thing. And I do think it's so interesting with our animals in care mm -hmm. and also with our ambassador animals that you they have taste preferences. They do. I mean, certainly our our pool birds yes. they have taste preferences. I don't know if she does. Does she prefer mice over rats or? Um, she does prefer mice. She does. She does prefer mice over rats. So apparently mice taste better. Mice taste better, yeah. <laughs> it, it is, they're all individuals. I mean, just, you know, they're the same species, but everyone is an individual, just like we are. Yeah. Um, so, and that's our uh, job here, is to try to figure out what they like the best. Right. And try to accommodate that for her. So if we wanna kind of, I'm gonna try to do like a little comparison here, maybe next to her skull. Yeah. Yeah. And the great horned owl skull. Now this is actually a larger owl. So how much larger? What's the size comparison? I do? Right about there. Oh wow! So Compa that's significantly yeah. larger. Okay. Significantly okay. larger uh, okay. than so sequoia. Much taller. So it's, it's really interesting to think underneath all that floof mm -hmm. of sequoia's feathers, she is, has a, head, a, a, a skull that's smaller than that. Smaller than that. Yeah. Right, and so then the comparison of the beak right there. Oh, I just find that so interesting because you do, you think about uh, uh, owls as having smaller beaks, mm -hmm. but you look at how big that beak actually is. Look how sleepy she looks. <laughs> uh, and if you even uh, go online, try to look at a barn owl skull. That is even more prominent. And those skulls are a little bit different because they, they're they tipped down like this oh. too, as oh, far as position. Yeah, because you're oh. like, how, how does that, yeah, definitely go and check that out right there. But yeah, you can see definitely the comparison there. Maybe if we do that right there. Yeah. Oh, isn't that just so interesting? Ah, uh, it, it's really fascinating when you get into the intricacies of each of our animals um, that we work with, and you're just they're just they're perfect in every sense. They don't they don't have anything extra on them. What they what they have on them has a very specific purpose. Yep. Yep, um, absolutely. They don't have an extra toe or anything like yeah. that, you know. It's all um, whatever, whatever their specific purpose right. is. Yeah, absolutely. We have a question from Nina about are these recorded so we can share with people 
Sorry, you guys can't hear me. She has the microphone. Oh, sorry. Uh, are these recorded so we can share with people after, especially with kiddos who will find this amazing? So the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And this brings up an interesting point that we need to let everybody know. We've been doing these every single day since like March 18th, uh, every yeah. single week. Yeah. We are actually going to take a week off next week. Mm -hmm. I am visiting my family and am then going to quarantine myself briefly. Yes. So uh, I will not be on site to do our live streams next week. Mm -hmm. So next week is the Memorial Day weekend, yeah. the weekend of the 25th of May. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but these videos are all available on Wildcare's website. If you go to discoverwildcare.org, forward slash virtual discoverwildcare.org forward slash virtual and I will also put that uh, down below in the comments on Facebook uh, you can see this video and you can see every single one of the other videos that Melissa and I yeah. and uh, I and hospital staff have done over the last couple of months during yeah, the shelter in place. It's, it's been quite amazing how if we really stop and think about how long this is uh -huh. how long we've all been in the state yeah. and everything that's going on and yeah. and um just amazing the work that w that we do here and that how we've able been you know holding it together yep by great teamwork yeah. and we great support. We started this because we knew that everyone that comes to Wild Care on mm -hmm. a regular basis, we have visitors that come on a daily basis and, and we knew they'd be missing our wildlife ambassadors. So that's yeah. why we started doing yeah. these videos. Yeah. So, but we will be back after yep. our week's hiatus. So no question about that. Oh, and just one more thing too is we actually have to trim their beaks. Oh, have that's to, interesting. Yeah. What happens if it kept growing? Um, if it kept growing, um, she would have trouble eating. Sure. So would um, it get even more hooked? Like, yes, it actually would get more hooked. And if I flip it over here, this um, lower part of the beak here would overgrow, so they would have an essential gap or an, um, an underbite. Oh. Yeah, uh, which would make it, it difficult for her to eat. So we actually, ha or I actually have to trim her beak. Now that doesn't happen in the wild because the way that they're trimming their beak in the wild is that they're rubbing it on different surfaces, trees, um, rocks. They would be also um, eating carcasses, bones, tendons, everything like that would be helping to keep that beak sure. filed down and maintained. But um, because we can't offer that, yep. um, we have to give them um, manicure, I guess, or pedicure <laughs> for lack of a better, um, and we have to do the same things for the talents. And uh, depending on really the uh, species or in the individual, they can grow fast or they can grow really slow. Yeah. So uh, manis and petties are not the same for them as it is for us humans. <laughs> no, not relaxing, probably not fun. No, no, no. And um, also I thought it was very interesting too, is at least that I found with uh, barred owls and spotted owls, you can actually tell how if they're older or younger by the color oh, of the beak. So okay. the young ones Tell I found have been yellow and as they get out, um, older, it starts to fade out. And you can kind of see that the gray uh, mm -hmm. up closer to her skull and then it's a little more yellow as it gets down onto the hooked part. Yeah, which is uh, in reverse that it would be for, let's say, a golden eagle or a bald eagle, you know what I mean? The colors would change as well as they, they matured. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Very so. cool. Well, Melissa, this has been fascinating. Thanks. I have learned all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you, Again, if you want to see this video later and all of the videos that we've done in this series, mm -hmm. discoverwildcare.org forward slash, forward slash virtual, mm -hmm. B-I-R-T-U-A-L. Uh, thank you, Sequoia. Always a pleasure to see this absolutely gorgeous bird. And uh, everybody stay healthy, stay well, and we will see you tomorrow. Yes. And then have a week's hiatus. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks.